Vamos carajo Viva la raza It's your boy JT Mysterio here For another episode of South Stand Signings This series Of course we go through everything happening in and around the world of Leeds United And we have a little talk about it And we have some huge, huge, huge news coming out Because Leeds have finally, finally, I repeat Finally made a signing so let's dial up the 619 baby and get straight into the meat of the action because there is so so much to talk about but before we do get into the big signing we made there are a couple of other stories i want to quickly talk about one of them is obviously manuel benson we spoke a lot about him a week ago it seemed like Leeds' deal of hijacking him from Southampton's grasp was almost complete. It seemed like a dead certainty that day that Manuel Benson would be coming over to Ellen Road. I thought it was basically locked on. I thought we'd be losing Wilfred Nonto. Then, out of nowhere, Wilfred Nonto signs a new deal or, or, or is on the verge of signing a new deal and apparently... According to these articles and many other noises around the club, Leeds are very, very confident of signing Wilfred Nanto to an extended deal, rumoured to be extended until 2028 with a big price increase, which a wage increase, which will basically end our hunt for Manuel Benson, especially with the way that Jaden Anthony played the other day. Now, one player who might be leaving Leeds, on the other hand, is Hiel, that is right, Sunderland are looking for a Hield class player to bolster their promotion campaign, and the guy they're looking for is named Leo Fior. Leo Fior held, obviously had a little spell at Leeds in the Premier League, he came to us, he played one that he came to us, he came into the squad, featured for a couple of games, and he was actually a very competent defender, and there were some calls to give him a lot more game time, eventually he kind of fell out of the squad, you know, he was only there of a necessity because of injuries that we had, but he never really managed to get himself back into the squad after that little purple patch that he had, and it just hasn't really worked out for Hjeld at Leeds United, it just hasn't been something that has been very fruitful, and now that the opportunity for him to play for another promotion chasing team, I think it's a good move for him, is it a good move for Leeds, do we want to strengthen a team like Sunderland if we did potentially end up in the playoffs do we want to bolster a potential opposition not really it's not really my first ideal choice of something to do but unfortunately we might not have much of a choice in the matter we need to bring money in and we need to bring money in quickly speaking of Leeds potentially not bringing money in and why it is so imperative that we get a lot of players off our wage bill and bring in some transfer fee is because if we don't get promoted we are going to lose out on a bucket load and I mean a bucket load of money from potential people one of them is a 17 million pound valued Mark Rocker who if Leeds don't get promoted has the option to extend his deal over at Real Betis if we don't if we do get promoted obviously then we have the leverage we have the power to basically say listen if you want to buy him you're gonna have to pay us 17 million pounds 15 million pounds. however much we say we have the power to do that if we're stuck in the championship we have absolutely no power in this um and it is saying basically that he is most likely to stay there uh, speaking about his time at betis to el de Mars. Desmarque, he's admitted how much he's loving life at his current club, also in confirming that the Spanish side can extend his loan to 24-25 season if Leeds aren't promoted under Daniel Fark this term. If there is a clause this year, if Leeds are not in the Premier League, I can go out on loan again. Let's see, basically, listen, he likes it over in Spain, he's playing a lot better football there than he probably did for Leeds, uh, and he's, you know, he's loving life out there, and you cannot blame him, mate. He's living, he, he's living his best life playing in a hot climate, a language that he's more familiar with. He's loving life, mate. Why would he want to come back to Leeds? Probably not. So it seems like a move that's almost certain, but hopefully we can get promoted so we can get that money in. Now, speaking of the big story, the one everyone's here to see, it is the main man, Daiki Hashioka. And this has come absolutely out of nowhere, completely out of left field. Everyone sat there. When's Nico Williams coming? When's Connor Roberts coming? When's Ben Godfrey coming? And out of absolutely nowhere, Leeds have plucked Daiki Hashioka 
out of thin air and it seems almost guaranteed that we're going to sign him. And it's ridiculous how quickly this has moved when we've been messing around with other players for weeks, which kind of makes you believe, were we even linked with these guys in the first place or was it just a load of hot smoke and, you know, smoke and mirrors, should we say, to quote Cody Road? Was it just a whole load of smoke and mirrors? For me, I think this is an interesting deal. You know, he's not proven at this level. He's not proven to do it in this country. But he's a very, very promising young fullback. And he is also a fullback, which is what we need. We need a defender who can play at we can play on the on the side, especially someone who can feature it right back as well. We are so weak there with everything that's happened to us. We've lost two players. Archie Gray is now injured. Shackleton, for me, not 100% ready to cut the mustard at right back. You've got injuries over to... Uh, potential injuries that could be happening to Sam Byram again. Furpo struggles to keep himself fit for an entire year, so we definitely need this. This is a huge, huge deal in my opinion. Uh, but we are going to be facing stiff competition for him, though. It is rumoured that it isn't just Leeds that are going to be pushing through this final part. There are other sides. Club Bruges are named among many, along with a lot of German clubs that are also very interested in him. Although he has apparently come out and said that he would much rather move to England than any other country if he was going to play, which is exciting news for Leeds United. It is also apparently... Uh, pretty much given the green light completely for him to come because he has been left out of the match day squad because he's apparently busy completing his Leeds United transfer. Uh, Daiki Hashioka was left out of St. Truden's squad to face Genk as he looks to complete his transfer over to Leeds United. This is according to David van der Broek. The Belgian journalist reported via his ex account on Sunday, the 28th of January, that the 24th, the 24-year-old was nowhere to be seen in St. Truden's matchday squad for their clash with the Belgian Giants, as he instead busy completing his January switch. This is huge. This is mouth-watering stuff. What do you guys think about this one? It's not the name that we all had on our lips. It's not the name that we all had on our minds going into this week. But it is, it is a promising fullback, and it is a fullback. What do you guys make of this one? I am thoroughly excited at the prospect of signing him. I think that he would have massively, massively, massively improved the squad. And we need, we need fullbacks. If we go into this season without signing any more fullbacks, we are absolutely screwed. Absolutely screwed. And look at this. This is just some more information on him. He's had 18 appearances in the Juliper Pro League this year. Two goals and two assists from a defender. It's a very, very impressive market value of £2 million. I'm not sure exactly how much uh, we're going to buy him for. I'm not sure if it's a permanent or a loan. I believe everything I'm reading is that it is rumoured to be a permanent switch. I'm not sure how much, how much valuation we're actually going to spend on him, though. Uh, but he can also feature down the right midfield if we were to play play him there but most likely we don't need him in that position but because of his good attacking output that means we can also afford to play him at right wing back which is basically what we've been doing if you look at what we how we played midweek against Norwich we had Furpo and we had Archie Gray basically hugging the touchline and pushing so far up they were almost at the halfway line a lot of the time Gruev would drop back to make it a back three you'd have Roden you'd have Gruev in the back three and you'd have Ampadu in the back three and then you'd push Furpo and Gray really high up. So if you're telling me that you have a right back who's, you know, very competent going forward, can also play right mid, that fits in perfectly for Daniel Fark's system. And this is the problem Leeds have had. We haven't always bought players that have fitted Daniel Fark's system. We haven't bought Daniel Fark players, which I don't really understand a lot of the time. And I know Perot's the, the main example, but there's quite a few of them that don't really fit into his system but Hashioka is definitely one that will. Let me know what you guys think, though. Are you guys excited by this move? Are you guys annoyed? Are you upset we didn't go for Nico Williams? Do you still want us to bring someone else in alongside Hashioka? Please let me know down in the comment section down below. But for now, guys, I will see you very, very soon. Adios, amigos.